Hello and welcome to 21st Century. I'm Daljit Daliwal. Across rural China, there's a transformation going on. More and more women are stepping out of their traditional roles and into positions of power. We travel to a remote region of China to meet women leaders who are shaping a new future for their country. Here's their story. It's a typical sight here in the Chinese countryside. Women working the field and preparing meals for their family. But it's rare to find 41-year-old Peng Wei Ling in her kitchen. She has little time for domestic chores. That's because Peng is busy in a very different kind of role, that of Communist Party secretary for her village. She was elected four years ago, the first time ever that a woman in her province attained such a leadership position. Having taken up this position, I had to be responsible and let people know that, as a woman, I was just as good as anyone. Peng's story is a success story. It's also the story of many women's struggle to secure positions of power, a tale shared across much of rural China, where women have customarily had little say in the affairs of their community and where more than 75% of all officials are men. But all that's slowly changing, as more women like Peng are gaining leadership positions and representing so many who depend on their voices to shape a new future for China. Peng's village of Qingxi lies close to the Russian border in northeast China. With only some three months of frost-free days a year to plant and harvest, life is especially difficult for the families she serves. Peng spends most of her time advocating for them, like helping farmer Ke Pei Ching gather evidence of damage for an insurance claim after his land was flooded. Whether or not he receives this compensation can mean the difference between saving his field or him losing it all. As an official, my main responsibilities are looking after village affairs, communicating with higher levels of government, and putting in place policies to improve infrastructure in the village and to help develop the economy of the community. And here, that means building roads to improve trade and building bridges to help rural farmers access their land. The river used to divide our village in half. People had to wade through the river to get to the fields. The vehicles had to drive through the water. But one of the most important responsibilities, Peng says, is handling disputes, disputes that often begin over issues of land ownership and boundaries. Land is the lifeblood of the countryside. To help keep the peace in her community, she's a constant presence at the province's land bureau. Today, the land bureau has come to confirm the boundaries between fields. Once this has been confirmed, the land will be managed properly. Jin Ka Fu is a village head who works closely with Peng. He says he's witnessed the power of women leaders. There was a two-year dispute between two families in the village over field boundaries. The local police couldn't sort it out, and neither could the court. But the Secretary Peng and the village party committee harmoniously resolved the years of grievance. Efforts are underway across rural China to get more women involved in shaping policy and enacting change. A pilot project to do just that was launched in Peng's own village with the support of the United Nations Democracy Fund, UNDEF. Our project tried to increase the number of women leaders. Mikiko Sawanishi is UNDEF's deputy executive head. 
She says the first step is identifying potential female leaders in villages across the country and then training them to run as candidates. They're taught about the issues of politics and are given guidance on the electoral process. Finally, she says, women are taught vital leadership, management and decision-making skills. But Undef and many others believe that part of shaping the women leaders of tomorrow also means helping women gain economic independence today. And so leaders like Pang are helping set up new industries in which women can play an active role. Industries like producing honey and harvesting mushrooms. We saw the market potential and wanted to do this large scale. We negotiated with the local government and raised money in poverty relief aid. But while promising, Swahanishi says that getting women on board is not enough. Men's attitudes must also change. Project also educate or change the men's perception so that also men can support and help the women to raise their voice, where women can really voice their rights. Men and women should be equal and independent. If their status in the family is not raised and they are not given equality, then that's discrimination. But while the women remain hopeful that change will come, juggling the demands of their roles in government with the needs of their families and their farms in many cases has not been easy for so many women leaders here. I used to be the main force at home in farm work. Since becoming party secretary, I don't have time to work in the fields anymore. My husband showed us the whole responsibility. I feel very guilty about this. I'm really sorry about it, but there's nothing I can do. But in what Peng hopes is a sign of new times in rural China, neither she nor her husband and son would have it any other way. At first, the man in the village said, I was like a woman. I had to look after the chickens and dogs and do other housework. But I accept this for the sake of Peng Wenling's work. I just hope she can do a good job and that's enough for me. It's also enough for her son, whose pride in her position gives her hope for the next generation of women leaders. Sometimes when I hear people thanking my mother from the bottom of their hearts for helping them, I feel very happy. Even though she can't spend much time with her son or husband, she can help others to live well.